All these fools found parking, but I can't find parking because there aren't enough spots in this parking lot. And street parking is too far away. $20 for parking? This is ridiculous. What is this? You okay over here, sir? Oh, dude. I just had to run all the way across this parking lot because there weren't any spots and now parking's twenty dollars. Isn't that ridiculous? It is, that's why I use drop car. Drop car? What the heck is that? Step one, you download the app. Step two, you set a time to meet with the valet. Step three, you meet the valet, you give them your cars, or your keys to your car. Step four, you go into your thing, you set up another time to pick up your car. Step five, you meet them again, and you're done. That's awesome! So Spencer, how and where did Drop Car come about? In 2015, me and my roommate had one car that we shared. Owning a car is expensive in New York due to the price of parking, so I offered to pay for the direct expenses of the car if they'd pay for the parking. I began to wonder if other people would be willing to pay for a service like this. My partner in LA had been having similar thoughts on the viability of a service like this due to the problematic parking in large cities. What was it like before Drop Car, and what are the major competitors? The car industry was just starting to change with services like Uber, Lyft, and Zipcar being offered to the public. With the availability of smartphones and the service and software that they provided, innovation was happening at a rapid pace. Services similar to Dropcar appeared like Carbon, Lux, and Xerox, but they quickly died out as they realized the difficulty of implementing an Uber-like valet service that can make a profit while also being reasonably priced. So now, what has Dropcar added to the auto service industry? Unlike services like Uber and Lyft, where the driver picks you up and drops you off, Dropcar allows you to enjoy the comfort of your own vehicle while still offering the same convenience. For example, if you're trying to get to the restaurant, you could take an Uber and get dropped off, or you could drive yourself in your vehicle and have a valet pick up your car when you get out and deliver it to you once you are done. Since its beginning, how far has Dropcar really come? Dropcar originally started with a basic service that allows you to have your car parked at one of our garages. When you need your car back, you arrange a pickup, and a driver will bring it to your location. Our new premium service was launched in January that gives you all of the benefits of our old service along with the maintenance and care program. How have customers reacted and do they have strong reviews? All of our customers have loved our idea. We have started scaling upwards these last six months and unfortunately this has led to some problems. One of the bigger problems of running a company like Dropcar is quality control. Even with vetting, Dropcar has had a variety of bad employees and a lack of drivers. Most of the poor reviews listed online call specific Dropcar employees out for constantly being late or damaging their car and not reporting it. Most of Dropcar's bad reviews have appeared in the last six months. We have been scaling our business in cities that were already located in while also expanding to other major cities. This has strained Dropcar's labor resources to the point where many customers have complained about not having enough valet driving during peak hours as well as not being able to get through to customer service. We recognize these issues and are actively working on solving them. What leverage does Dropcar have on its industry? The simplicity in our model makes us unique to our competition and offers something that they don't. Dropcar will drive your car to you when you need it. Instead of having to wait for a lift or call a taxi, you can schedule your arrival time for your driver and have your car waiting for you when you need it. What is the future market for a company like Dropcar? Big data. Data has consumed the servers of all industries, including the auto industry. This onslaught of data has made finding useful data difficult. Dropcar has loads of auto data that we have yet to release. In our company's latest press release, we announced we are open to data licensing agreements. This has opened up a whole new market for Dropcar. Outside of data, our company plans on physically expanding to other major metropolitan areas, including Los Angeles, Boston, and Washington, D.C. While the name Uber Parking has a nice ring to it, we have been clear that our business model is only effective in dense urban populations, limiting growth to major cities. Spencer, tell me, how is Dropcar going to scale this business? We are attempting to move our focus to a B2B model. We are primarily interested in the consumer business as that is the easiest. Our B2B service arranges the pickup of vehicles for maintenance by dealerships, fleet leasing centers, and other auto care facilities. In anticipation of a substantial enterprise expansion, Dropcar has recently converted a large portion of our seasoned valets into field management roles. While this transition momentarily tempered valet-based expansion, 
It enables Dropcar to efficiently absorb the anticipated demand surge in 2018 from Tier 1 automotive OEMSs, dealerships, concierge service subscribers. By transitioning to a B2B model, we believe Dropcar can stay ahead of the curve. What kind of growth opportunities do you see with the company as a whole? We plan to expand to other cities, purchase more of our own garages, and partner with car dealerships.